the 17th at the end of the day, we had hoped to be in on March 17th, right. but you know, we couldn't be. And by that Friday, we had packets going home, Google Classrooms up and running. And wow. so, exactly how yeah, we we've been ready to do it. Yeah, us too. Um, we were, we were um, brought in together um, as our coaching team to put together some packets. Um, and we're a one-to-one -one district, uh, district grades three through eight. So we have the technology there. Most of our teachers were, um, you know, ready to go. But now it's like really looking at how are we going to um, systematize everything and make it a little bit more fluid um, amongst the whole district so that there's um, that support for parents at home, you know, mm -hmm. if you have multiple kids. Yeah. Okay, right. so you want to go ahead and get started? We may as well. <laughs> Let's do this. Okay, so... Um, my name is Heather Hilts Fitzgerald. Um, I am currently the educational technology instructional coach within uh, the Romaland School District. So we're we're so SoCal uh, Inland Empire. Um, we're close to uh, Riverside County as well mm. as you know we're nestled in between Riverside. We're, we're in Riverside County, but right next to Riverside um, and then Temecula. And so I've been teaching for about ten years now. Um, and this is my first year as um, an ed tech coach, but I'm extremely excited to be um, in this position during this time because a lot of what I had previously done in my classroom um, just really translated well to um, the school closures. Um, and so ultimately we're here today because we're, we're gonna start talking about what is this transition towards online learning um, going to look like once we start the new school year. Um, and obviously, th these are unprecedented times. Um, there's been a, a, an abrupt shift for all of us, right, to, to change what our practices were face-to-face -face and go, um, you know, directly to online learning. Um, and so today, we're going to really talk about um, the support aspect of it, not necessarily the academic aspect, but really, um, how are you going to start that school year off with that positive culture um, that you usually could have had face to face? Um, and we're going to really look at, um, you know, kind of structuring routines and schedules with our students too, because that's ultimately been like the biggest um, eye opening conversation that I've heard from, you know, people in different county um, levels and even just teachers is that they really thrive on having that consistency with, um, you know, their teachers. Um, so again, those focus groups that we're going to be looking at will be specifically at the students. And then we're also going to look at some ideas of, of how to support families. And if you ever you need like to stop and like ask me a question or if you want to like collaborate on an idea right here and now, like I'm, I'm totally down to do that too. Um, so with my research currently and just collaboration with people in different counties and different districts, um, we're noticing now that with our students, our biggest goal for them at this time is to create that sense of autonomy um, and really that self-directed learning idea. And so we really need to um, think, you know, what are the type of instruction, instructional um, tasks that we're gonna be providing for our students, but then how else are we gonna really try to um, give them a voice, give them choice, to make them um, you know, be responsible for their learning and also want to engage in their learning. Because I think, it, don't get me, like if you would probably say as well as a teacher, what's probably the most challenging aspect right now when it comes to online learning with your students? What's that connection piece? You know, when we're in the classroom, I can walk by and look at their work and give them that feedback immediately and say, you know, this, this doesn't look right, take a little bit of more time, make it less messy. You right. know, I can't give them that. And as much as I try to do that through things like Google Forms, where I can, as soon as they turn it in, I'm popping that feedback right back to them, but I can't be on top of them like I can do in the classroom. There's, you know, there's that barrier. Yeah. Would you also say like the engagement and motivation is lacking? Like the like yeah. what is the percentage of uh, students that are actually engaged um, on a weekly or even daily basis? Right. You yeah. know, I've got maybe eighty kids participate, eighty percent participating, but um, 
in general, you know, how, how much is that participation? It's not, it's not really great. They're not into it. It's, it's sad, you know, cause you take the time to yes. try and make these yeah. engaging lessons, or at least you think they're engaging yeah. and the kids are like, no, I'm good. <laughs> right. Right. And so I, I really pondered this whole um, idea of, you know, eventually going to online learning or distance learning or a hybrid model. And, and I think really it stems back to developing that culture and the relationships with those students first, before we even jump into any academics, you know, and even in those first two weeks, we can totally fuse those academics into those relationship building um, activities. Um, but that, but we need to create um, that foundation first. Um, and so um, within Riverside County, I've been participating in, you know, multiple sessions with um, district leaders and coaches um, and together, this is what they're discussing. They're talking that talking about communication as being key. Mm -hmm. And so as long as you are a teacher that is present with your students each day, those five days, um, that will make a drastic change. Um, and so you know, before, like I said, before getting even deeper into those academics, making um, that connection with your students on um, a weekly and possibly a daily basis. And so um, obviously you said you use Google Forms, so you guys are probably a Google district or mm -hmm. uh, you use Google Classroom. So yeah. obviously Google Classroom is going to be your hub, right? And not only is that going to be a place where you can push out assignments to them, but you can also push out announcements, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, do you establish Google Meets with them on a weekly basis or maybe even a daily basis? Yeah, we were using Zoom, um, but some of our teachers um, were using Google Meets. Um, we all just kind of jumped in. Nobody really used, you know, Google Classroom was something that we used for some things, but not on a regular basis. And so um, like our middle school was using Google Meets. They found it to be a bit more um, user friendly because it had the the, the text option and all of that. The right. lower grades were using Zoom. Um, if we have to do this again next year, I want to use Google Meets because I know that it can be embedded within Google Classroom now. And so right. and then maybe it just seems a like a one stop shop. Maybe that's a conversation you can have with your district as well. Yeah. If you guys do have Google apps and things like that and just make it consistent among mm -hmm. the entire, um, all of the grade levels. Because again, think about your families. It's like, we really need to narrow down, like what are the specific applications we're gonna be using? And then also get out that information to your parents. Like, okay, so we're using Flipgrid. Okay, so we're using Screencastify. We're using Google Meet. Th these are what they are so that mm -hmm. it's not like a mystery to them too. Right. Right. Um, and then ultimately during that communication time, especially in the beginning, I really think it's valuable to just have it be unstructured sometimes mm -hmm. or like do some games or um, have, have a sharing time. Um, just make it so that these kids can obviously connect with their peers in a manner that they usually would face to face um, because we've all been cooped up for quite a, quite some time and, the relationship aspect is not there anymore. And that me as a mother as well is what I get concerned about um, most frequently with my own child. Um, and, and so just having those, those times like, you know, designated for fun and just sharing would be perfect. Yeah. Um, and one thing I do want to make mention too, though, remember that think about each of your individual students as well. Not all of them are going to be want, uh, be able to verbalize how they feel, right? You know, you, if you've ever used Flipgrid with your students, mm -hmm. some of the kids don't like it, right? Because they don't want to, you know, show their face. So give them options as well. Maybe some sketch noting, um, mm -hmm. have them, you know, sketch how they're feeling, take a picture of it using Google draw to, um, you know, show what they're feeling or um, have them journal. So just mm -hmm. provide opportunities for that unstructured communication uh, with your students. Okay. Um, another cool thing that I came across in the past few weeks is, again, that social emotional aspect. And so um, I don't have the link to this um, mood meter here, but I mean, I'm sure if you dug really deep into the internet, you could find one, but they were using this as a way to check in with their students right before their Google meets. Mm -hmm. um, I've, they actually did it with us as, um, you know, um, some 
some teachers and things like that, just to check in how we're feeling so that before you begin um, a meeting, you can gauge the percentage of where your students are so that you know which way to tailor the rest of the conversation with your students. And one thing I do want to share with you um, is, and then all of these things are mostly all hyperlinked, FYI. So if you click on all these pictures, um, they should give you um, an, a hyperlinked document. This was something pushed out from a fifth grade teacher within our district. So she'd go ahead and push this out at the, um, you know, either the beginning of the week or the day. And you'll notice that she did things like, did you have good sleep? You know, um, or have you eaten? You know, because they don't know how to moderate their day either. Um, and then just, they could give like a little note about, you know, something they did this weekend. And that way she had that individualized check-in with the students so that she knew what she could do for each individual child where necessary based on their emotions. That's great. But yeah, I, I, I was like very uh, taken back when I, she shared that with me. I love that idea. So um, are you doing things like that? Like asking about, um, you know, how they're feeling or, or do you feel like they're um, willing to share that? Like, are, are they opening up? Oh yeah, you know, um, before we went to distance learning, um, we use a curriculum called Mind Up. We do a lot of mindfulness at my school. Cool. And so they're really, they're really in tune with being able to share how they're feeling. At least, you know, some of them can articulate the way they're feeling. Um, our fifth grade teacher did something similar. I don't know what she did, but there was something that she did with the kids where they checked in with an emoji or something like that. And I thought that was a really great way to connect with them. I had um, meetings with my kids and we do um, uh, like a classroom meeting every morning. And so, and I just tried to do my zoom meetings like that too where they did the check-in and they got to share and they talked with me and asked questions and i tried to keep that communication open so that they could share when they you know weren't feeling right or had weren't sure what they were feeling so it's kind of nice to be able to have a small school for that yes definitely yeah okay so um so now like you're already in the mix with your distance learning so i mean obviously you're you're pretty much an expert because you just jumped <laughs> right in, right? Um, because we're all in the same um, boat yeah. now. It all it all just transitioned so quickly. So now, if we're really looking towards that future of um, the next year of how we're going to roll out the school year, you know, thinking about that first day. I mean, I remember the first day was like you you would take like three days to plan it, right? Like, what activities are we gonna mm -hmm. do? Like, how am I gonna fill in this time? And you're not gonna have maybe that that experience anymore with that face-to-face -face, um, getting to know you bingo or um, you know the spaghetti challenge right like let's see how high we can build our tower together. but so now we have to really start thinking outside of the box what type of activities are we gonna provide with our students to make that stable foundation for the rest of the school year um, and so do you use edu protocols or have you heard of edu protocols I have not Oh my goodness, good, good, good. Okay, so if you're able to either have your um, you know, school site purchase this book for each of you, each of your teachers, because they have everything from the littles to the uppers, um, Edger protocols are pretty much instructional practices that um, will support everything from language arts to mathematics and then everything in between cross curricular cross curricular. Ugh cannot say that word right now. <laughs> um, but at the, um, so they, there's two books now, um, um, John Carippo and Marlena Heburn. Um, they're really great educators that are just supporting that shift to um, educational technology as a way to drive instruction, right? Um, but again, a lot of this stuff can be printed out as paper-based too, because if you think about your littles, they're not gonna be able to access um, right. you know, Google Doc very well. But one section at the very beginning of book one is called Smart Start. And they ultimately say that culture is everything. And so really putting aside um, the academics and the testing for those few, first few days, maybe even a week, and really get to know one another. Mm -hmm. So um, these all are hyperlinked if you want access to them. They might have, I think, on the side, like a little um, snippet of what you would do with them. But obviously, I mean, it's not really hard to understand, like Freya, a classmate, 
right? So um, trying to go around and figure out how people are the same or different than you. Um, but they have really great, just really great practices that I think are gonna um, help support teachers um, towards this, this next year. So you gotta check it out. <laughs> I'm excited for that. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so obviously I'm not gonna do the mentee because we're not gonna have this large word cloud. And have you used Mentimeter before? I have not. Okay, that's something. I'm not huge. I'm not huge techie, so a lot of this is new for me. Right. So write Mentimeter down as well because Mentimeter um, would be something that you could push out to your students too. I'll show you the back end of it really quick over here. Um, so Mentimeter is ultimately a place where you can push out. I'll say like uh, hang out presentations, but there's so much more than pre presentations because they can be assessments as well. Mm -hmm. So what you would do is say, for example, you yeah. wanted to create a word cloud of how people are feeling that day. You would click word cloud, put your question in there, like how are you feeling? And then you can change the amount of um, participant, um, you know, participating words mm -hmm. and so maybe you want to put one um, and then from there you would present and you would get back some type of data from them and then even think about like assessments and whatnot um, so they have lots of different options as to how you want to push them out let me see if I have one we did on the learning norms and you can kind of see what it looks like oh there we go We only had three people um, access this, but <laughs> that their stuff will come up mm -hmm. and then you can see that and that's shared. And then that also helps support other learners who might not have like an idea of even where to start, right? So Mentimeter is a good one too. Mm. Yeah. But um, so wait, back to my question with you then, what type of culture building activities have you maybe done thus far in the past couple months? Besides your, your morning meetings and things like that, are there other, um, other activities that you've pushed out to them? Um, they have worked on um, Google Slides, shared Google Slides. Um, they're working on finishing up a project, um, designing a theme park. And so they're pushing it out. I have a flip grid that we're doing the flat teacher. Um, activities with and so just trying to get them engaged not very many have jumped on board which is unfortunate but um, you know we're trying <laughs> right that and those are the first steps and I, I, I really applaud you for using um, the Google uh, shared slide deck because then that will then eventually take them to the next level when they get into upper grades when they do have to collaborate on a group project mm -hmm. yeah Especially fourth graders, like they can totally do it. Yeah, they can. <laughs> They're un they feel unsure, but they have the ability to do they it. Know. They're all. I mean, even once they get into middle school, you know, I went and visited all last year with the middle school students who were my previous students. <laughs> technology all the time, and they're always hesitant at first, and then, and then they just excel. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so another thing towards the beginning of the year that might be very beneficial is just obviously developing those norms with your students. Um, and so maybe the second day that you meet with your students on that Google Meet, uh, really um, maybe scripting out or charting out what are the expectations of our classroom, especially when it comes to those Google Meets. Because obviously, um, you know, we only have a designated amount of time to be with those students. Um, so how are we going to be mindful when others are talking, muting our mic, um, what are the appropriate things to talk about, um, developing the norms even as to when we will do our, our work or how much work we will do. Mm -hmm. One of the teachers that I work with, she was really interested in kind of getting insight of her students as to how much workload was really realistic for them. And so they really came together and, and discussed, you know, about two to three hours per day is what they could really, um, you know, handle. And then um, they really liked the idea of doing like a four day learning plan. 
Um, and then that fifth day, more or less, just going back and doing reflection, um, you know, maybe one-on-one -on -one meetups with the teachers, um, and then making sure you're getting all of your, um, your stuff in the, on that Friday. So I thought that was really powerful to uh, give voice to the students as well as what is realistic during this online learning time. Um, another really great tool would be creating a mission statement as well. Um, my previous school that we uh, that I had left was a leader in me school. And so uh, we were really ingrained with the seven habits. And one of the um, options for us during that first week of, um, you know, community and relationship building was for us together to create a mission statement. And so um, down here are some just some little this one will take you to like an actual fill it in mission statement for yourself, like a personal one. Um, and then this is also just like a, a, a I think I created that one for, uh, to push out to students as well. Um, so think about not only creating a mission statement for yourself, your students individually, but also then how are we going to create that mission statement? Because I know for myself in the classroom, when things weren't going right, that sucker was there for us to go back and read and remember that these are the expectations. This is what we, we centered ourselves on at the beginning of the school year. So let's get back on track, right? Yeah, we are a responsive, um, responsive classroom school. And so we do a lot of these buildings of, of mission statements and writing our rules together and writing our you know, logical consequences together. And it is powerful. Oh, it is. It's amazing. Yeah. And like I said, whenever there was like some type of, you know, tiff going on or some type of fight going on or when we're just not like meshing well, we could go back and reread that. And I, I, I swear to you, it just made things better for a while. Right. Yeah. So we had to yeah. re read it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, that takes me into something else that you're probably maybe, um, knowledgeable about too is that uh, personalities um, mm -hmm. this is the Myers-Briggs version which you know back in the day I can't even get it like how these chicks came up with <laughs> this um, but this is something that I used to do within my fifth grade classroom with my students um, doing personality tests at the beginning of the year and um, so this is a hyperlink to a paper version that I found that's pretty user-friendly but a lot of times I would just have my students go to 16personalities.com. Um, it's, it's, pr it's pretty like PG rated. Like some of the questions they might have, like they don't understand because they are a little like, um, you know, like how are you using your time? And they might not oh, understand, yeah. you know, the adult lingo of it. Um, but most of the time they could, they could get through it with um, just maybe a little bit of guidance. And afterwards, then they get a really cool little avatar that goes along with who their personality is. Have you ever done the test before? The 16personalities.com one? I have. I, not on 16 personalities, but that sounds really cool. I'm okay. going to do that when we're done. <laughs> you should do it. And then guess what? You're going to tell all your teacher friends to do it. And then you're going to tell your family members to do it and try to psychoanalyze yep. everybody. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the one thing that I think is really great if this is done at the beginning of the year Think about how you could infuse it into academics. So mm -hmm. um, I, I did this activity with a large group of educators at one point. And so we then went around and charted ourselves. So you could totally spin this off into something mathematical, right? Mm -hmm. um, creating line plots. Um, you could have students then develop a story, um, you know, a narrative based off of their personality or Maybe they pair up with another personality and, and create some type of a script of how they would mm -hmm. interact with one another. So there's a lot to be said about the personality test that you could totally spin off with. And because you guys are like a mindful like school, mind up, right? Very we did, yeah, mind up. Yeah, mm -hmm. like this seems like it would mesh very well with you. Yeah. Love it. Okay, and then the third thing that would be a really great classroom activity at the beginning of the year is um, creating values. Um, this is a really uh, powerful activity uh, for anybody that participates in it, but it's ultimately really looking at a list of values and then narrowing them down to five values. 
Um, and then, so there's, there's access to all of these in here already. Hmm. That you could push out digitally to your students. Um, but then it really then gives you as, as an educator, the sense of what do my students really believe in? What is meaningful to them? Um, and then think about all the different type of, you know, academic um, extensions you could do with this too, based on writing, um, maybe mm -hmm. asking them to find um, books that are connected to these types of values that they're, they're um, so passionate about. So those were like kind of like my three little core activities that I would definitely, they were my go-tos at the beginning of this mm -hmm. year, for sure. I like them. I like that they're new to me. You know, you get kind of stuck in that rut of doing the same thing because it worked. But, you know, I like these, whether we are in the classroom or out of the classroom, they're great. Right. Yeah. And, and obviously they can be changed and modified as to the needs of your students, um, you know, and even the grade level and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so taking it, taking all those ideas and then, you know, really holding on to them for the rest of the year. One idea that you might want to push out at the very beginning of the year is to, um, create digital portfolios mm -hmm. using sites. And yeah. So, I haven't done them before, but I, I have wanted to. There. So this is a great opportunity. <laughs> yes. And so, and especially, obviously, if you're going to be a hybrid or completely online, um, you know, setup. Oh, let's see, why aren't they showing all of mine? Um, this would ultimately be a way for them to collect the evidence of learning throughout the entire school year, right? So um, not only, so I, I don't know why I clicked on Google Sites and I thought some student work would go up there, but it didn't. Mm. Um, but I, this whole, um, session down here is available to you too. It, it goes in more in depth into these uh, culture and relationship building activities as well as how to do the Google Sites. But the things that I would include besides your mission statement, besides the personality test, the values, um, a place for students to drop in their writing. Um, they would also have a page set up for goal setting. So we do we mm. already in the district, so we would create goals for each diagnosis mm -hmm. after that. Um, but yeah, just a way to gather evidence of learning. Yeah, that's great. Where you're not having to pull from all the different, you know, that's been my, my hardest part with trying to teach through Google Classroom is trying to organize it as it's going, yes. you know, and, and the assignments, I have to keep accessing the assignments to get the information and it, it is so time consuming. So being able to have them just plunk it all into one place is, you know, or at least most of it is really exciting. Right, yeah, like just curating one portfolio of that really meaningful work. Like obviously mm -hmm. Google Classroom is going to be the instructional tasks get you to that final product. But right. really as an educator, you only really need to look at that final product. You know, obviously your, your common formative assessments that are leading you through the way, but um, you really just wanna see that nice clean final product that you can assess them on. And mm -hmm. then it'll follow them too, because obviously they have a Google account within your district. If mm -hmm. they move on to middle school, it'll be there with them as well. Right. So after, you know, obviously our students are our first, you know, line of attack. They are, they are at the heart of everything that we do. You know, this is why we are educators, but now we have to remember that we have another facilitator of learning and that's going to be the family members. And so, we really have to start focusing on including them in the conversation. Um, and I really do believe we have to, um, you know, provide opportunities for learning for them as well. Um, this is a conversation we've had within our own district of looking towards the future that, you know, our parents are the ones that are really struggling. So what type of workshops, what type of, um, you know, PD sessions are we gonna provide to them? So you as a teacher will be the first line of attack, I feel, as a person to educate your parents. Um, I obviously agree that beginning of communication at the beginning of the year is gonna be vital. Um, an idea that I think would be great, to be honest with you, especially for you guys, because you're such a small school, is that um, having a Google Meet kickoff with your principal or, yeah. or your AP or your counselor, um, that first, you know, 
I don't know, maybe even before school actually starts, mm -hmm. just so that everybody is familiar with who you are and, um, you know, getting them excited for the school year. But then again, from there, it's, it's constant communication, right? Um, do any of these look familiar to you, some of these apps that you're using? Um, I had Remind at one point um, when I started at my school, um, but we use something universally called Parent Square. Okay. And so it's a communication tool that has, you know, the um, private messaging. It also has the global messaging. And so it's been really a uh, great tool. And I use it daily with parents. I'll send out any kind of information they need to know. And so it's been a great way to have that you know, have that communication with parents. Well, I, I think that's really valuable too um, when it comes to a school site and it's streamlined because I know that within our school site where we had, you know, multiple teachers per grade level, not everybody is using a parent communication tool. And, and that can be difficult for um, some parents to be like, hey, well, this teacher's, you know, doing Remind, but this teacher's not doing anything. So um, very vital, right, for us to stay connected um, have you heard of Seesaw before? Um, at one of my um, PD trainings, I, I had a little bit of Seesaw, but not, not enough to be able to say I know what outworks. Yeah, it, it changed even since I've used it, um, but I, I, I do like it in the sense of it is that idea of a digital portfolio as well. Um, mm -hmm. but obviously, if you guys already have something that you're using that's um, familiar and that's working for you, you know, just simplicity is key right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's nice about it is that it goes out when teachers can send out individually to our own classrooms, but then like the, the principal or the office can send out any kind of global message. And so if you've got, we've got a, a family that has six kids at our school, you know, and so it's better they get the one message than, you know, from every teacher. Because right. Because then they stop looking you know, they're tired of the messages. So it's nice to have that one spot that goes out. I love that, that's great. Um, one of the ideas too that's been presented by some fellow teachers is um, screencastifying themselves, you know, recording themselves, um, going over the weekly learning plan. Um, and, and later on in, in the next session, I, I'll give like um, some samples and resources for some suggested weekly learning plans, but really, um, what was what's being seen as valuable is a teacher which this is Kim Vogie right here uh, went over did a little synopsis of like what the kids need to complete for the week and the parents were extremely appreciated they, they appreciated it because they didn't have to sit in on a Google meet on a weekly basis right. they could just watch the video get it they didn't need to read anything um, make it you know two minutes or less and you'll see that you'll get a lot of success that way. Mm. Um, and, and then another thing too, is that when you do get to those weekly learning plans, not only for the parents, but screencastifying yourself, maybe for the daily tasks too, for your students, could be something that's key mm. too. Um, and then another thing mentioned was feedback. So obviously, you know, communicating voice and choice with your students, but then, you know, maybe checking in every once in a while with your parents, maybe after that second week of instruction, what's working, what's not, uh, what do you need support with, um, and, and just kind of get that data as well. Um, so, but ultimately, like, right, be, be realistic. And the, and the biggest thing that I'm, I'm seeing, like I said at the beginning, um, a common theme is that instruct, instructor presence. As long as you are there and present and providing meaningful tasks that are connected to um, standards, so providing support and flexibility, there should be success, you know? And, and I think ultimately we really need to just um, be aware of what's going on with our families at home, um, and be sensitive to that. Um, and then just, you know, we all have to be a team at this point to really make this learning work next school year. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. I'm a little, I'm done a little early because, you know, it's just you and I. <laughs> but do you, have any, do you have any questions or comments or ideas? No, I'm just really excited to try some of these. It, I like that the ideas you've given 
today really just kind of fit with what I've already done and I don't have to change everything again to be able to fit in and you know they're realistic and they fit with the philosophy of the school and so I'm really excited to to try some of these things and we've done you know surveys with parents um, here at the end we did a survey but I like the idea of doing it throughout right um, you know to kind of get that feedback um, you know there's always that vulnerability when you put it out to parents of like hey is this working you know what kind of things you're gonna get back right but, you know it can help you really change and modify and make it work for them because it's hard to know if they're not if they're not giving you the feedback you don't you know you can't change it right right and and at this point you are almost like a co-teacher with the parents so there has to be that open communication because you yeah. don't want people to misunderstand you or you know just I, I mean, give up at some time, sometimes, right? Because they're right. frustrated in their their own practice with their students. Um, when are you guys done with school? We finish uh, Friday. Okay, well, yeah. congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. you we we kind of did our cutoff on the 29th for work. I'm still accepting digital assignments for a few days yet, you know, but um, yeah, Friday's our final day and I'm we're gonna have a little celebration celebration with my class and I on zoom and something you know because it's it's sad to just be done I know without that end of year so yeah it's completely different it's and I can't believe it's already June 1st that is just amazing it's crazy it's crazy <laughs> it's been the longest you know couple of months ever but it just went by so fast it's almost like in a, a haze you know and it's like what Wait, how did 10 weeks pass yeah yeah <laughs> and everybody's just kind of dealing with the stress of COVID too, you know? So it's just been really an odd time, hasn't it? It really has, it really has. You know, and it's pushed me to my limits to be able to figure out how to do, do more for the children with the technology. And I've used Google Classroom in a really generic sense in the, you know, the past couple of years. Um, and I started using it more and more in the last two. And I'm so glad that I got my students in it and on it and prepared at the very beginning of the year because I don't think they could have been as successful as they were right. if they had not experienced it prior to you know March. So that I was thankful for that. Yeah, definitely thinking about your third graders coming in, you know, um, you, and and so yeah, getting them on the bandwagon with technology right at the beginning is so yeah. important. So I'm glad you were able to do that because they probably were able to really navigate nicely, you know, now. They had no idea what email was. Some of them had never logged into their school email and, you know, their their whole technology practice had been with iReady, you know, and they weren't on it otherwise. And what's a Google Doc? And, it's just, you know, at this point, it would be nice to have them. So I'm happy that third grade jumped on because they're going to be ready for but, next year, at least for me. So that's good. I always think that it would be really cool, um, you know, like obviously there's Google certification for teachers, um, and I've heard of this talk too, but doing like Google certification for, for students, you know, just getting yeah. them familiar with all of those applications that eventually they're probably going to use in their profession anyways, you know? Right. So well, that's the way we're headed. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's another idea at the beginning of the school year, be, you know, yep. Google I'm writing it down. <laughs> you know, challenge, like. And, and you uh, you doing a Google Meet where you're going through Google Slides, Google Docs, and just showing them the toolbar and how to utilize it. Yeah. Exactly. So are you on Twitter? I'm not. Well, I do have a Twitter, but I don't use it. <laughs> we get on Twitter, and then we can, we can share and, uh, you know, tweet things to each other. <laughs> yes. Well, I will get that up and running before the next session. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for attending. Do you have any other questions or I'm just going to go enjoy no, your week? I'm just really, really happy I signed up. I mean, just this morning, my principal was like, did anybody sign up? And I went, oh my gosh, I meant to. And so I'm, I'm really happy that I got that email this morning. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I'm glad you came. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so I'll see you on Wednesday then. Yep. Okay. Bye-bye. Um,